you were about four years in the industry, you were really getting tired of the scene, uh, questioning what the future would look like for you. And you go across the street from where you were living and you go into the bank and something so we might think insignificant happened to you that would change your mindset and change your life. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I always would put my check into the ATM or the Dropbox because there's a memo on the check that says what the check is for. So I didn't want to face that shame because I was humiliated. So that's the way I would normally deposit checks. This day, neither the ATM or the Dropbox was an option, so I had to face the teller. And it was a normal transaction and deposited normal hellos. And then I go to leave. And as I go to leave, they say, Joshua, can I help you? Joshua, is there anything I can do for you? And what was odd about that is that I was leaving. The transaction had already transpired. If it was the, you know, the, the initial part of the conversation, it would have made sense. But what she didn't know is that I hadn't heard my real name in over a year. Because of that isolation and shame, I had stopped talking to my family. I had stopped talking to my friends. I had unfriended everyone that I actually knew and had an authentic relationship with from social media. So when she spoke my name, it shattered this reality that I had created. And I just felt every bit of the pain that I was trying to just push down deep into my soul. But that experience was the catalyst to you walking away from the industry. In fact, you went, you spoke to the director, you said, I quit, I'm done. You sold everything you owned for the most part, or gave it away, and you moved yeah. back to the hometown where your mom lived. Yeah, I ran home to mom. You yeah. ran home to mom, which is a great place to run. Um, yeah which you hadn't done in a while because of the shame that you mentioned, but you talk about you, this new season that you entered into. A, a lot of people would think, well, this is great. You know, Josh has seen the light. It's all, you know, unicorns and rainbows from this point on, but this actually yeah. started a very dark season in your life. Why was that? Yeah, because I think often when you're in the middle of a dark time, you wear a mask and you, you, you don't really lean into the pain. You don't even really, uh, you know, you just try to mask your emotion, mask your feelings. And the way I masked that is I made a tremendous amount of money and I, I had, you know, I received a lot of affirmation. I traveled the world. So all these things would somewhat justify what I was doing. So if we remove all of those things and all of a sudden I'm working in a grocery store and I'm working at a gym, I'm working two jobs just to pay for the taxes on the year prior all of a sudden that pain feels a lot more real. And all I have left is that shame and those memories and those nightmares. But then there was hope. Tell us about her. Tell us what was so special about meeting this young lady named Hope. Yeah, so I, I was working at a gym at the time and she walks in and I ask her, I'm like, hey, can I put your equipment away? She just finished and she was like, no, I can do it myself. I was like, man, I'm in love with this girl. And then I asked her out on a date and she said, no, uh, maybe we can go for a run. And I was like, I don't like running, but okay. And then we go on this run, but leading up to that run, I had spent two years lying to people, trying to cover up my past. Yeah. When I got out of the industry, I covered up my tattoos, I deleted my social media, I did everything I could to cover up that person that I was so ashamed of. But people kept finding out. I was the most popular adult film star in the world, if, if not the most, like top 10 in the world. So that content was everywhere. I couldn't run from it. People kept finding out. So I, we go on this run and I tell them like, hey, I need to tell you about my past and I know that you're probably not going to want anything to do with me. And she said, well, you know, a person is not defined by the worst thing they've ever done. And they're not defined by the best thing they'll ever do. That doesn't define you. And she asked me if I knew who God was. And then she asked me if I had a relationship with God and she literally ushered me into the presence of having this healthy skepticism to know in a personal way this God that I knew about, but I never had a real experience with. So hope takes you to church. You hear a message. But there was a journey yeah. of healing that you had to go through. And tell us about how you found that healing and that freedom in this new relationship with hope. 
I mean, I know you faced the fear of rejection, and yet with full disclosure, she embraced you, and you guys continued yeah. to walk in relationship together. In fact, you've become married. But I, I want to hear about your journey towards freedom, because someone is watching today, Josh. Maybe they're even someone in the adult film industry, and they're feeling trapped. You know, they've, they've been sucked in by the lure of the money and the fame and, and yeah. all the success, and yet they're hurting, they're dying on the inside. They may be dealing with addiction, and you know, they may be living life recklessly. They may be believing the lie that the only thing they have to offer is selling sex, and maybe you can talk to that person today out of your own experience. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that you're searching for in life is to be loved. And what you want as you stay in that industry, you ultimately you accept this counterfeit version of what your life could be. Because no one in that industry, regardless of how much money they have or whatever fame they obtain, when you lay your head down on the pillow, you're ashamed. And what I experienced was a real encounter with the person of Jesus. He loved me so much. He saw me in the middle of where I was, and then he met me where I was at. And knowing that he loves me so much that he was willing to sacrifice everything and die so that I can experience life, it's, it's just something I want everyone to have. So that person out there, you believe that your past defined you, it doesn't. Today, you can change how you're living your life. Today, you can decide you are worth doing something better. Your life is designed. You have gifts and talents and abilities that you are passionate about, but you have suppressed because you believe that the world doesn't need you. But God says it needs you so much that he was willing to die so that you could live. What gets Joshua Broom out of the bed these days? What do you pass? Three boys. <laughs> three, three baby Whether boys. Whether you want yeah, to or not, have, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 5 a.m., daddy. I love it. Yeah, um, we are the proud parents of three, uh, three beautiful boys. We have a three-year-old and 18 a month old and a five week old little baby Judah wow. was born about a month ago. And man, I, I just get excited every day because I get to do what I never thought possible. I get to share my experiences with others. I get to preach the gospel all over the world. And man, I never thought that my life would amount to anything because of the decisions that I made. But God saw me and met me where I was, and he radically changed everything that I thought that was true. There was absolutely a lot of rebuilding and destructing and destroying of the way that I saw myself and the way that I saw people. And that caused me to appropriate myself differently in the world. And man, that's, that's just what I want people to know. Regardless of what you've done, it doesn't have to determine what you do next.